this country in for the wonderful food, as always, that they always. give. Look at and there is still food. So if you're hungry and getting your second breath, help yourself to more food, please. Um, now next we're going to have up, I guess I'm going to start off with Guy Annabelle is going to come and, he's, and say a few words to us. He was uh, one of our uh, people, uh, one of the brave people to run for councillor in City of Ottawa. I actually got to know him really well earlier this year. You'll see over here on the board, but back here you see some pictures of uh, some, that was in the uh, Landowner magazine of uh, Ron Barr's, the big one there with the big face, face on one of them. Um, but that's where I got to know Guy. He was one of the people that stepped right up and helped fight for hydro rates and everything like that. And, and I got to know him well, and he's someone that I could put myself behind. And uh, thanks for having us. Merry Christmas. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, fight's not over for hydro. I'll hopefully get into that in a second. I'd like to thank Beth, CLF, noted attendees, M sitting MP Patrick Brown, who took his weekend to come and talk to us today. It was the first time I got the chance to hear Patrick, and I'm uh, really glad that he took his time today as well. Jack had to leave as well, but thanks to all the people who came today. It's a great group, and uh, this is my second uh, CLF breakfast, uh, especially Christmas breakfast. I go to, I, I go to the group at... Uh, oh, no problem. I go to the uh, Ron Colpus Center. Um, I went there once and spoke before the municipal election. And to those people that contributed to the campaign, thank you very much. It was a great group. A group called Language Fairness brings us here together this morning. Their goal both admirable and singular, but I think it's fair to say much more bonds us for our current concern and for the direction of this province and country. I just want to take a few minutes of your time and give you a brief perspective on my current work moving forward after my council run and what I feel is still important to all of us after the most recent provincial and municipal election that took place in late October. What do we have to look forward to this Christmas, this fall, after the elections? Well, another winter of outrageous hydro rates and what we can do about it. I'm not going to stand here today and complain for five minutes. I want to again relive the fight on what we can do about outrageous hydro rates and our two low residential service rates in this province that are both usury and discriminatory and it is a crime. We have 42,000 stranded Ottawa Hydro Ontario customers that live within the boundaries of the city of Ottawa. Would you please raise your hand if you get an Ontario Hydro bill and live within the city boundaries? Greg, Eric, a few others. Okay, we'll talk about it later and I'm also going to talk to Nick about it as well, about how we can finally get these 42,000 stranded customers under Ontario, Ottawa Hydro and away from Ontario Hydro to lower your bills and there is a legal challenge that you can make because with the current Liberal majority we will never see Bob Shirelli amend those 42,000 poor souls into Ottawa Hydro's fold. There is something you can do, and we're going to talk about it a little bit today, and I hope people ask me questions on it. What do we have to look forward to as well? Well, what did we observe in the past two months regarding municipal governance and corporate union contributions to the municipal campaign, as well as the provincial campaign? Both of them seem to mirror each other. They are defiling our democracy. When you have a newspaper that's wrapped with an image of a mayor and basically subjugated by the media as an endorsement, that is a crime to our democracy. And we saw it on October 26, on a bright Sunday morning, when you opened up your paper and saw Jim Watson's face, and you saw the son and the citizen, Jim Watson has a vision for Ottawa. Jim Watson for the best mayor. And how did he do it? He did it with your money. Because the union and con contributions that came to him from the corporations that funded his campaign, you paid for. Because it gets padded back into the contracts that they bid on for the city of Ottawa. And that is a crime that we must change. But Jimmy will never change it. Toronto in 2009 voted 29 to 11 to outlaw corporate and union donations. The feds just outlawed it. 
So why is Ottawa different? Mike McGuire spent $20,000 on his campaign. Jim is probably close to $540,000. Yeah. How can you call that democracy? Another low point in my election was that 38% of sheep even bothered to show up and trip over a voting booth. Jimmy made off with the hen and the wolves now are at our beck and call. The media, a disintegrating industry that we very much needed is the only hold, holding elected, councils, elected officials to account has already been bought and sold as we saw on October the 26th. God knows in Ontario that this is true even more so with the governing Liberals in this province because we do not have a properly functioning provincial police department that will hold their political masters to account. And that is a crime. I hope I'm bringing some Christmas cheer here today, folks. It's coming. It's coming, I promise. In the close, I'll give you some Christmas cheer. You know, there's so many structural things in this city and province that are easy to fix. But if there's no political will from the ruling class and people do not speak up, people like yourself that come on here on a Saturday morning to spend their time to hear about other politicians and what they're going to do, the 60% have no voice, the 40% that voted have the voice, but we need to do more. I'm very worried about this province and the city and where we are going and hopefully Pat, people like Patrick and getting rid of the 32 people in the last um, provincial party will be start of rebuilding this party and this province. I'm going to just skip over that. So why am I exactly here today? To spread Christmas cheer? Well, yes. But as a friend of Beth and having attended about four CLF meetings, and talking to this engaged group in the recent municipal election, I really clearly realize that you folks are the engaged ones. You folks walk the walk. You folks put up the signs. You folks contribute to the people that are trying to make this province better. And I congratulate that to, for you. I just wish there was more of us. And I just wish there was a younger generation that realized the perils of this province and what lies ahead. With regards to English language rights and not letting further erosion of those rights, we have a movement here in the French side which has a laser-like focus for the past 30 years of putting Anglos at a disadvantage and the Francophone interests first under the guise and shroud of bilingualism. Sounds like something else that we're fighting also that happened on October the 22nd. But when it is used to take over our institutions and used as a discriminatory hiring practice based on language first and merit last, this also must change. You see it in hospitals, you see it in government agencies, and you hear it firsthand stories on the radio all the time when the subject is even allowed to be broached. It is a shield of armor that Trudeau 1.0 established and enshrined as one of his first orders of business in his first term of office and now 2.0 will entrench itself if we allow it to. Where numbers warrant. Don't you love that statement? Where numbers warrant. Boy, that's a heck of a legacy to stand behind. In closing, folks, I really appreciate being given the opportunity to speak with like-minded folks who feel, sim feel similar about the direction we are taking in this city and province and how helpless I feel sometimes when I hear everything from libtard sex education policy gone wild to how much energy we exported to a competing jurisdiction at four cents a kilowatt hour, a total loss, and Mike Crawley walks away with a $500 million contract which he has resold to Saudi and foreign interests on your children's backs. Wow. That is a crime. It still remains the biggest unreported, unsolved crime in Canadian history. But again, without a working judicial system and without a properly functioning provincial police department that will not be held to account for their political masters, two basic elements in a just society, we must ask ourselves, what can
can we do? We are on untraveled roads in Ontario, almost akin to a dictatorship run by liberal socialists that have little regard or capability to even come back near to balancing a $12 billion a year deficit and a $320 billion a year credit card balance. That's quite a minimum payment Kathleen has uh, racked up on the credit card. $11 billion a year just to keep the card in her purse. The third largest ministry cost that produces nothing but bond interest payments to foreign com companies and union pension funds. In four years, we will have another fork in the democratic road to choose from. The last four elections have not given us much hope. Let's hope the le next election is fairer than the last, but don't count on it. They still have the numbers, and Dalton's army is still very strong with his union and public service control of the electorate. But at times like this, when we get down and think about the bigger pictures, I look to leaders like Winston Churchill and look to at his picture and say, we must never give up. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, have a great season folks. Thank you for allowing me to share a couple of minutes of my time with you. you guys want to do the 50-50 draw? The winning is $105 for the winner. Come on. Zero, three, five, eight, six, five, two. Repeat it again. Zero, three, five, eight, six, five, two. Is that yours? No. <laughs> Somebody's got it over there. Someone's got it, Meryl?